Welcome, everybody, to SJG Perspective. Today, I want to share with you how the CDC changed, violated federal law and made changes to how it reports, reported the deaths. This isn't absolute new information. It broke in early October, and we were talked about in the news cycle for maybe a few days. Some people that paid more attention hung on to it longer. That's the one that referenced the 6%, right? That didn't have any comorbidities that died, which dropped the number at that time from, I don't want to know, 100 or 160,000 down to about nine. Then all the fact checkers came out and said, well, that's not true because comorbidities exist anyways. And COVID-19 exacerbates comorbidities. And so the 6%, that really wasn't a, a moving of the uh, a goalposts. And that isn't anything weird and that this is totally normal. Now move along, move along. When in reality, that that news story that broke in October sixth, talking or uh, in October talking about the six percent, that goes back to March, and that's where you need to go back and understand how big a change actually took place because nobody has covered it and exposed it that I've seen. They talked about the 6% and everyone was like, oh yeah, 6%, see, we told you so. And then the fact checkers came out and they they, they showed how this doesn't, that doesn't matter and then everyone moved on. This, the, the Charlie Daniel Charlie, I won't, I don't even have to say that. The CDC violated, and this is fact, they violated the, 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 the changing of the reporting on death certificates. They could have very easily went through the proper channels and they did afterwards for other things <clears throat> and they did before for other things. But when it came to how they reported on the death certificates, COVID-19 deaths, they changed a very, very, very important thing back in March and nobody seemed to, it didn't get much attention, at least that I saw. Maybe you're way ahead of me and you knew all about this. But when I was reading this and I read the whole document, which I will show you, I read the whole document, which was 20 pages long. It was a peer-reviewed breakout and analysis of exactly what they did. And it is mind-blowing because it is the, it was it was that change that built the whole narrative that led to everything downstream, right? The closing of our economy, the absolute, our, our lockdowns, the losing of all of our freedoms and our personal uh, freedom and liberties, um, our mandates for what we have to wear around on our face, um, the closing of our schools, everything downstream of this. This, this is one of the linchpins that um, was used for that to build the narrative and the anxiety within all of us that we need to just believe what the Charlie Daniel Charlie organization tells us to believe. So I'm not going to read the whole article here point blank. I will let you go and you check it out yourself. But let's jump right into the article. Okay. So I'm going to start here where it kind of gets into the meat of it. And I, I get away from some of the editorializing that they do in the article here. And here, right, if you want to, I will put the link to the actual, right, the actual um, uh, report and uh, peer-reviewed report that was done, which as you can see, I went through, as you can see, all the highlights. I downloaded it through a PDF and down and went through all the highlights are mine. I... Um, I didn't be able to share this with you so you can just read it and, and read my thoughts because I can't exactly put stuff out on here without it, you know, getting in trouble. But we're going to see if we can't get through this with, uh, I can't read this article to you. We can't get through to it or through it. So we'll see where to go. Okay. So here, on March 24th, the CDC published the NVSS COVID-19 alert number two document instructing medical examiners coroners and physicians to de-emphasize underlying causes of death. I just want to say before I read on further here, I am not going to editorialize a whole lot on this. I am just going to present the facts as they are. I want you to go and read this article. I want you guys to go understand this in depthly what they actually did, not just what happened with in October 6th when the, the news came out about the 6%, but how they, how they, what they violated, what they ignored, and how nobody pushed back on them and nobody called them out. And to this day, they have not had to answer for it. Okay? You read it. You come to your own. Uh, I'm not going to editorialize too much. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble. I'm just going to read what the facts are. 
They de-emphasize underlying the cause of death, also referred to as pre-existing conditions or core morbidities. By recording them in part two, rather than part one of the de uh, death certificates, right? Or they could have listed it at the very last of part one, not in the very beginning of part one. And we'll, we'll talk about this, but this is up until March when this, all, this new one was rolled out by the CDC. Up until that time, 17 years, they had used a different format, a different protocol, a different procedure for reporting deaths. And then come March, they changed it without going through the proper channels. The underlying cause of death are expected to result in COVID-19 being the underlying cause of death more often than not. This was a major rule change for death certificates reporting from CDC's 2003 Coroner's Handbook on Death Registration and Fetal Death Reporting and Physician's Handbook on Medical certi uh, Certifications of Death, which have instructed death reporting professionals nationwide to report underlying conditions in Part 1 for the previous 17 years. So they took all the pre-existing conditions and they shoved them at the very, very bottom and they put them into part two, right? And they put COVID-19 at the very first when that should have been flip-flopped. This single change resulted in a significant inflation of COVID-19 fatalities by instructing the COVID-19 be listed in part one of the death certificate as a definitive cause of death, regardless of confirmatory evidence, rather than listed in part two as a contributor to death in the presence of pre-existing conditions, as would have been done using the 2003 guidelines. The research draws attention to this key distinction as it has led to a significant inflation of COVID fatality totals. By researcher estimates, COVID-19 recorded fatalities are inflated nationwide by as much as 1600% above what they would have been the CD, what they would have been had the CDC used the 2003 handbooks stated on all concerned citizens. Then on April 14th, the CDC adopted additional rules exclusive for the COVID-19 in violation of federal law by outsourcing data collection rule development to the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologists, a nonprofit entity, again, without applying for oversight and opening opportunities for public scientific review. On April 5th, the CSTE published a position paper standardized surveillance case definition and natural notification for 2019 novel coronavirus disease, listing five CDC employees as subject matter experts. If that is not the fox guarding the hen house, I do not know what is. This key document created new rules for counting probable cases as actual cases without definitive proof of infection. Section V or section, what is that? Five, seven dot A1 pages four and five. New rules for contact tracing allowed contact tracers to practice medicine without a license. Section seven dot A3 page five. And yet refused to define new rules ensuring that the same person could not be counted multiple times as a new case. Section seven B page seven stated all concerned citizens. Now, all of this is again listed in over here, right? In this white paper, right? This peer reviewed white paper, it's all very clearly listed over there. And I want you guys to read it. It's important, if nothing else for your own mind. By enacting these new rules exclusively for COVID-19 in violation of federal law, the research alleges that the CDC significantly inflated data that has been used by elected officials and public health officials in conjunction with unproven projection models from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. Remember that uh, with, uh, um, forgot the guy's name right now, but the one that came out of like London, I believe it was. That might not have been the one that came out of London, but you're, you know which one I'm talking about. To justify extended, I think it was actually, to justify extended closures for schools, places of worship, entertainment, small businesses, leading to unprecedented emotional and economic hardships nationwide, which are we are seeing expanded and grow, growing more to where you even now have to wear two, right? Whenever you go outside, they're saying that you don't have to, but they're pushing that. They're pushing that we're all going to have the, you know, real soon. And that's all going to be great and everything will be totally fine, even though that doesn't give you any kind of immunity, right? 
they're pushing the the the, the continuing to push uh, the LDS right, keeping you in your homes, uh, uh, school closures, so on and so forth. All of this is happening, and 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 it's primarily being pushed because we have so been absolutely lied to about what the actual numbers are because they changed the standard of what they used for 17 years to report deaths on the certificates, death certificates for since 2003, they used this all the way up until 2020 in March. And there is a process to which you make an application if you want to change that and you want to edit it and you want to change the way it is reported to death certificates, there's a process you go through, right? And you you um, go through this real quickly by, um, it's right up here, all federal agencies, including the Centers for Disease, Disease Control and Prevention, are lawfully required to comply with the Paperwork Reduction Act, the PRA, and the Information Quality Act, the IQA. Data being collected, analyzed, and published by any federal agency is required to meet the highest standards for accuracy, quality, objectivity, utility, and integrity as defined by the PRA and the IQA, as well as additional guidelines issued by the Office of Management and Budget. And they did not do that. They just made a change and went with it, and nobody stopped them, and no one has stopped them to this day. So... We could argue all day long about with fact checkers on Facebook and in other places about the 6% number that came out in October and then got swept under the rub, debunked by Fauci himself and so on and so forth. We could argue about that or we could go back and say, why didn't the CDC use the same guidelines they had used for 17 years prior? And how does, has no one held them in violation of changing these guidelines without going through the proper channels? Because that is exactly what has happened. Okay, so. Mm, there we go. I would love each of you guys, if you care about, uh, you know, really um, educating yourself on this, I will put these links in my description. I encourage you guys to go and to watch or to read this, the, the, this paper, this uh, peer-reviewed paper, it explains it in clear, clear detail several times and lays it out. And it'll take you 25, 30 minutes to read it, right? Maybe even an hour to really digest it. But when you do, you will understand just where the seedling was, how it was planted. And, and I really do feel like this is one of the major, major linchpins to the whole car, house of cards falling had it been followed and it wasn't. By our, yeah, by the CDC. So, please give me your thoughts below. I'd love to hear them. I thrive. I um, if you got mean comments, that's okay. I don't care. And uh, good comments, it'd be great too. I will be putting up some new videos, finishing uh, my or doing my next episode on wagging the moon doggy, and then I'm thinking about doing a long form description on this one and going through the paper. It would take a series, but. Uh, give me your thoughts below if you would like me to go through this whole thing, you know, and, and do it on like a four or five part series, break it up, then uh, I'll do it. I'll read the whole thing and we'll go through it line by line. It's very, very educational, but I really feel like we all need to understand it um, because it's more than, it's more than to know just what they're doing. You need to be able to have an intelligent conversation with somebody that is factually backed up with documentation of how, just exactly how, Right. If we want to start to get people woke up a little bit and we have to keep trying to wake people up little by little and man, we are losing our time to do that. Our country is already in the toilet. We need to try to reach our neighbors and our family and our commute, those around us, right? With truth, wake them up. That is what my goal is in doing this. So let me know what your thoughts are until next time. It's SJG perspective. We'll talk to you real soon. And uh, look forward to seeing some new promos I'm putting out with some friends of mine. Janky Jackson, um, Stoner Joe, and Alfie Weinstein. So, Weinstein. So, um, you guys will appreciate them. So, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Without fear or animus, it's SJG Perspective. Bye.